Hey everyone, this is Jeff and I'm gonna walk you through how to create an event in the Subsplash dashboard. The Subsplash dashboard, uh, once we create things there, it will push it automatically to our new app and eventually I hope to use that list on our website as well. And so um, it'll serve a lot of purposes and it's important that we keep that up to date with the latest things and the new things that we have coming up. Uh, you should have already received an email with some login information if you haven't come and see me and we'll work through that. But once you get logged in, you'll see the Subsplash dashboard. This is what controls a lot of the app, uh, especially under the builder tab, but today we're only going to worry about the library tab. The way that you start to create a new event is you go to library and you select events. You're going to get a window that shows you calendars. We're not going to add new calendars. We're just going to stick with the churchwide events for now. And once we open this list, you see a list of upcoming events down at the bottom of the screen. Um, it shows you what we have on the calendar and then past events. Those will automatically go away uh, from our event listings on the app and on the website. So you don't need to worry about taking those off when they're done. So you go up to the top to create event to get started. And it's a real simple thing. Uh, fill in the blank type form. The first thing title, uh, you want to say what the event is, obviously. Uh, keep it kind of short because it's you don't have a lot of space there in the app. And the subtitle, it's good to put location. And if it's something that people are going to know, you might want to put the time, but you're going to add that later as well. Um, under the description, you can make this as descriptive as you want or as uh, one sentence length <laughs> as you want, uh, whatever you want. Um, under the event then we move to the date and time section. Start by selecting the date and then add the time. The drop down only gives you one hour intervals, but uh, sorry, I covered it up there. I'm typing behind that drop down window. You can type in 15 or 05. Um, and if you want to add an end time, you can do that uh, by clicking end date. Uh, so right here you see the event goes from 9.15 to 10.15. Uh, but if you want, if it's like a week long event, a three day long event, you can also click on end date and adjust the time. And so it'll show up for those few days and the time zones automatically central. Then you're going to want to fill in the location. Uh, I know it seems like most things will be at Tabernacle, but start typing our street address. Uh, if it doesn't automatically pop up, keep typing until uh, until our address does pop up. It kind of runs on a Google map type thing. And so it'll find us and it'll drop a pin there. Um, if there is a spot on our website on the next section uh, that deals with uh, that maybe has a page for this event, you want to link it. Or if there is a planning center registration, registration, that is where you want to put the link to planning center registration. And then under, under website title, you'll say, instead of Easter at Tabernacle, you'll say register for Easter here or something like that. Um, under email, you want to put who's kind of in charge of the event. So Jeff at Tabernacle Family, Jill at Tabernacle Family, uh, Lisa or Alicia, Cody, whatever. Um, and then the last step is to add artwork. Now, this is important because if you don't add artwork, it'll just show up as just a blank square. You have to add the artwork three different times. Now, you don't have to have three different pictures. Uh, I format pictures differently, but that's just because it's quick and easy for me to do that. Uh, what you want to do is find a picture, uh, and if the picture has text, make sure the text is kind of small because this little uh, builder is going to change the dimensions of your picture to fit uh, three different applications. One is a square, one is a regular like screen size, and the other one is a very short but long banner. Make sure you add the image to each of these areas. The way you do that is by, for instance, clicking on the square, clicking upload, finding the picture. Uh, you, you know, if, if we don't have one, search Google images, just make sure there's some sort of image there. Um, and once it's uploaded, you have to click it one more time and go to add and it adds it for that size. And like I said, do it again for the next size width. I'm going to upload the same picture. I had that picture saved on my desktop. There's, you know, things there from the past. Once it's loaded, click it again, click add, and then same thing for the banner. Now it does have, there's a tab there that says stock images and they're just nature photos. Um, I would 
recommend not using those uh, for this application here. Um, so again, click the picture, click add, and then once you've got all that done, uh, it's fairly simple, you get everything plugged in, click publish, and that event will be live. Um, if you, you can click view on the web just to make sure it looks good. This is what uh, the web, this is what the event will look like uh, when somebody wants to click on it to register or um, anything like that. So that is how you create an event. I hope that this is helpful. And if you have any questions, come and find me and we'll work through it.